this practice session, we will apply the algorithms discussed in this unit with a very elegant, easy and practical suite of machine learning software that is called Weka. This is a software that you need to install on your machine, on your computer. You should go to this link where you can find all the information that you need about using Weka. And of course, the option to download this amazing software. Go to download. Choose your operating system, download the file, and install it according to the directions. Once you installed and run it, this is the opening screen. So very well, we have the suite and we can start using it. Usually, you will want to take your data, run it through Weka, and begin inferring some information. But of course, before you do that, you need to learn how to use the software. So before you use your own data, why not looking at some very interesting data sets that one can find online and practice on them? This is exactly what we will do in this practice session. Where do we find such data sets? One of the places is Kaggle, kaggle.com. It's actually, as they say, a place to do data science projects. And it's very nice site, quite famous, uh, was purchased by Google where, as you can see here, it is divided uh, to different sets. First of all, you have the competition. This is uh, what was their uh, first and most successful application, where uh, different teams can compete on data science projects. But also you can now uh, view data sets uh, without a competition. So it's a good source to get very interesting data sets. Kernels are actually pieces of code where people solve different kinds of data science projects and you have also some discussions and learning forums. We will go to competitions just to see what it's all about. You can see here that there are currently there are 19 active competitions. Each competition is described by the goal and as you can see here, there's also a prize. So these are the 19 active competitions. There are, of course, many other competitions that are already over. Just to make things uh, a bit more interesting, we will sort this list by the size of the prize. So as you can see, some of the prizes are pretty high. But anyway, for now, let's just go to datasets and find some interesting datasets to look at. Here is a list, it's a very long list of uh, interesting datasets. This list can be sorted according to different uh, parameters. Uh, I think more interestingly is the tags, where you can find um, datasets according to a specific topic. So for example, if we are interested in healthcare here, we can just pick this tab and see just healthcare related um, uh, datasets. And of course, you can also slice it even further. Notice that since this is a database of datasets that is uh, collected by the crowd, although it does uh, go uh, through some filtering, um, people can describe their datasets in different uh, words. So for example, healthcare is one uh, way to find something that we may be interested in. Another word is uh, medicine. So uh, we can add this tag. Now we have datasets that have both keywords, medicine and healthcare. So maybe we should uh, just delete the healthcare, for example. Uh, and let's add something also that we may find is interesting, like uh, data that we want from hospitals. So here it is. Nice. So let's pick just uh, one uh, data set, one interesting data set and see how it is uh, constructed. We will go to the HCC data sets. So what's so nice about the way that Kaggle organizes the data set is that, that it is very detailed and standardized. So first we will look at the data. Here we have a description, very nice description that describes what this data is all about. So as you can see, this is a pathocellular carcinoma dataset that was collected at the University Hospital in Portugal. 
It contains real clinical data of 165 patients diagnosed with HCC. And you can find more information later on. Here are the data. You can see the data sources, the different files that we have in this package that contains different kinds of data sets. And for example, for this file, which is the complete data set, you can see what columns it is comprised of. You can also see the actual data here. So now we are viewing just 20 out of the 50 columns. We can, of course, change it. You can see what columns our data set is made of. And you can see also the different rows where each row represents, in this case, a different patient. So this is a very nice data set that we will explore. We will just download it. So my data set was downloaded. Here it is. And if I go and open it, and we look on this folder, I will find all the files that it contains. Let's first have a look at this file, which is in the CSV format. This is comma separated values, which is read by many software, including Microsoft Excel. Here it is. As you can see, this is a really raw data in its most raw way. But it's good that we can see it in Excel. A more interesting format is this one that ends with ARFF, which also many software use. And if you have Weka installed on this computer, you can open it with Weka. But before we do that, I actually want to show you how this file is uh, written. And in order to do uh, that, I will add the txt suffix at the end of the file name. And then when I click it, it is just open uh, in Notepad. Now, the structure is very nice. First of all, uh, we have comment lines. These comments are actually not for the computer or for the software. It's for the human reader in order to understand more about this data set. So each uh, line that is actually a comment line begins with this uh, percent uh, uh, sign. So we can read about our data set. And when the comments end and the data actually begins, the first command is at relation. At relation says this is the data set. And after that, we give the dataset name, which is in this case HCC data. Next part is all the attributes of the data. If you want all the columns of the table. So you can see for each attribute, I need to uh, begin uh, with the at attribute word, then write the name of the attribute and then specify the type of this attribute and its values. So for example, Gender is a set of two values, one and zero, for male and female. Symptoms and alcohol and so on is the same. However, age is numeric, and so is grams day and packs year. This attribute, the PS, is a set actually of six options, of six uh, values, from zero to five, and so on and so on. The last part is the data itself. So when we begin with the data itself, we add the at data keyword. And here, each row is a different record, in this case, a different patient. And all the values are separated with comma. So each value belongs to the corresponding attribute that you can see here. So the first value is gender, the second value is symptoms, and so on. Okay, so this was just a quick look on the ARFF format. Let's close this and go back to the ARFF suffix. And now let's open Weka. This is its main screen and we will go to the Explorer application. Let's maximize the window so we can see better and open the file that we have just extracted. Here it is, this is the folder. And here, since we are looking at ARFF uh, format only, this is the only file that it shows, and this is the one that we want to open. 
and as you can see it has different parts the first thing that you should notice is the f is the different main pages that Weka Explorer is built upon this is the pre-process page that enables us to edit some of our data and apply different filters we will see it in a minute this is the classify page that uh, deals with supervised machine learning which we will see in a different unit this is the cluster the unsupervised machine learning page but we will begin actually with this page that does visualization it's a fantastic tool that lets us explore the data and do a first very rough analysis you can see here all the attributes against all the attributes we can uh, decide on the plot size so for example i will uh, make it a bit larger and on the point size which i will also make a bit larger ah that looks nice so each of those squares show us two variables in the two axes but also a third variable by the color and the color can be selected here so let's, for example, take the symptoms uh, attribute as the color. If you remember the data set, it was a set of one and zero. So there are two values here and they are shown in red and blue. After I selected that, I need to update my chart. Now let's uh, look for something of interest to us. Let's focus on hemoglobin for a minute. Against albumin. which is here. I go to the respective uh, square and click on it. Then the main visualization uh, window opens. Let's maximize it. You can see that the X axis is hemoglobin, the Y axis is albumin, and the color is symptoms. So again, we have three variables actually here. Very roughly, I can see there's some kind of correlation between the two variables. I can click on each of the points and get the full data of that point. So this is instance 77 and this is all its values. As you can see in our dataset, we have some missing values that if they occur in one of our attributes, it appears as M. It may also happen that two points are very, very close to each other. And therefore we have the jitter that adds some randomness and let us uh, isolate uh, such cases. If we want to zoom in on a certain area and not just one instance, I can pick, for example, the rectangle, make the rectangle that is of interest to me, click on it, and now I have zoomed in. Let's go back. Let's change it to age. But I can also look visually at this uh, bar where currently the x-axis is this variable that corresponds with this kind of uh, visualization and the y-axis is this. With a click on the left button of the mouse, I can change the x-axis. It came up to be GGT. And with a click on the right button of the mouse, I can change the y-axis, which became INR. So very nice it gave me a first glimpse at all my variables. Now let's go back to the main page, which is the pre-process page. Uh, and let's see what other parts we have here. In this window, we can see all the attributes that we have in our data set. And we can uh, move from one attribute to another. The attribute that is selected is actually detailed here in this part. Here we can see what this attribute looks like. For example, here in smoking, there are two labels, one and zero. And we see how many patients, how many records we have in each group. This is a nominal variable. If we go to a numeric variable like age, we can see what is the minimum age, the maximum age, the mean and the standard deviation. In this part, we can see a very nice visualization of the distributions of values according to a certain parameter. For example, like we did before, we will match the age to the symptoms. 
So we see for each age group how many records, how many patients belong to each group of symptoms. The blue bars stand for those that have one in symptoms. The red bars stand for those who have zero in symptoms. And the black ones stand for those patients who we have missing values in the symptoms variable. With the edit button, you can actually see the data itself. Here, the missing values appear in gray. You can also go and change one of the values just by clicking it. But probably we will want to undo this operation. Okay. Another editing that we can do for the dataset, which is quite important, is to do some initial filtering on the attributes themselves. In many cases, we don't want to use all the complete data set that we have with all its attributes for a certain calculation. We can select which ones we want to remove and press remove. We can also go the other way around, mark only those variables that we want to work with, press invert, so actually everything is selected except those that we selected before, and then click Remove. So, as you can see, Weka is quite easy, enables us to visualize our dataset, to explore it, even to edit it. So now the challenge remains. How can we solve the clustering problem, which Weka certainly does, but as I said in the lecture, we should be suspicious with its results. More on that in the following unit. Wow.